Hallo, can you hear me? Hello, uh, herzlich willkommen and welcome to uh, our panel on careers and internships with German companies. My name is Peggy Jensen. Uh, some of you know me from the German class. I've worked with others of you um, on arranging internships in Germany. We, as the German department, as a language department, are very happy to be in a position to uh, provide such opportunities for our students, uh, opportunities like internships in Germany. Uh, but we also think that um, this is not enough. It's not enough to um, teach you a language and to provide the opportunities to go abroad and test those skills that you develop here at the university. We also think that um, it is important to um, um, give you ideas on what to do with those skills um, back here in the United States. How to um, get internships, um, how to get that first job after graduation. And this is the reason for our panel tonight. And um, I would like to thank the German Embassy, who is the sponsor of this event, um, as part of German Language Week that's taking place this week here on campus. And um, yeah, so let us welcome our panelists. Um, they will share some information with us tonight about their companies, give us ideas on recruitment strategies and what they expect from um, interns and future employees. And um, you might have noticed that the title of the event is not exactly correct because not all of the companies are German companies. Um, Anna Lembrick is a former U of M student. She graduated two years ago with a um, major or minor in German? Major. major in German, thank you. She did a, an internship, a summer internship uh, as an undergraduate, undergraduate student in Germany, then went back for a full year to Germany and is now working with Deloitte Tax LLP. Then we have Kathleen Schilke with Fraunhofer USA. Fraunhofer um, being one of the largest and most important research institutions in Germany uh, with many institutes worldwide, including the United States. Um, then we have Sophie Stepke with ZF um, North America Corporate, uh, Operations. And uh, Sophie is a, a German native. She attended a pretty similar event five or six years ago here on campus and talked to someone from ZF and now has been working for ZF for four or five years. Um, and then we have um, Mr. Dolan yes. and uh, Ms. Oemke from EFV Automotive Engineering. EFV is um, based out of Berlin, Germany, with also a sub sub subsidiary in Northville. And um, they have been a wonderful host company for many of our students, both in Germany and in, in the United States for the past year. So please welcome our panelists. Um, I would suggest that we first hear the presentations, and then there will be time for questions and answers. And then after that, um, you all have the opportunity to talk uh, to each one of our panelists individually at the tables that we set up in the back. I am Anna Lebrick. I work with Deloitte Tax LLP as an international climate consultant. I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2009 with a degree in German studies and Russian and Eastern European studies. Um, after my sophomore year, I did an internship with Cultural Vistas. I was placed at the European Academy in Berlin, which is a European public policy organization. And while there, I organized conferences for students and teachers from the US and Germany and other European countries. And that gave me a foundation for international studies, which is what I wanted to study. Um, I went through a couple different majors. I was going to be a poli sci major and switched to economics, but ended up with German and Russian and Eastern European studies, which is the longest title in the world. We get used to it. Uh, after I graduated, I wanted to go back to Germany or at least to Europe and do another internship or continue studying. And I was accepted into the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange Fellowship, which is a one month pro or one year program. Um, and it has three parts the language school portion, university, and an internship. My uh, language school was in Radolfell and Bodensee, which is a tiny little town on Lake Constance. It's absolutely beautiful. I definitely encourage everyone to visit if you can. Um, 
The university I attended was European University of Gabina in Frankfurt under Oder, which is on the German-Polish border. And the university focuses on European studies and European relations. I was placed in the Master of European Studies program to keep in my understanding of European and transatlantic relations. <coughs> my internship, last part of the program, was at the German Marshall Fund of the United States. In the United States, which is an American public policy institute with satellite offices in Europe. And while there, I was a partnerships and development intern, and my project focus was creating profiles for the partnerships team. Um, and I read a lot about project management and the financial side. I prepared financial reports and project summaries for the organization and for grantors. I really liked the program's comprehensive approach because you really had a chance to do a little bit of everything. I lived in the dorms, I lived with a host family, um, I lived with a single woman, so, and I lived in three different parts of Germany, uh, which was just great because it, it really shows you a, a different perspective, whether you're a student, whether you're working, whether you're just hanging out in the city, learning a new language. So my goal was to work for a public policy institute after I graduated. I wanted to be in international relations, work in Brussels or Washington. It's not exactly where I ended up. I worked for Deloitte Tax LLP, which is a consulting and accounting firm. So what am I doing in financial services? I'm an international assignment consultant, and I help people move around the world. So if you're hired by a multinational corporation and they decide to send you to Germany or South Africa or any other country in the world, uh, someone like me will help you uh, transition into that new job and move to a different country. Oh, I'm missing my slides. Yeah. yeah, we can quickly go through them. I forgot I had a PowerPoint. <laughs> um, this is the European Academy of Berlin. Um, this was my first internship. And the Berliner Dome, of course, and Berlin, some of the most famous landmarks. And this is what I'm from Women's Day and some friends from language school uh, joining the Congress from the Society of Exchange Fellowship. And this is Frankfurt on the Order and the European University of Vienna. You know. uh, and while there, I really tried to not only learn German and learn about the German culture, but also be a young ambassador and share the American culture. Uh, so my friend Florence and I threw a Thanksgiving for 55 people. It was a very formal sit-down Thanksgiving, complete with turkey and um, cranberry relish and homemade pumpkin pie and the works. Um, so definitely encourage you, if you're in a different country, to kind of uphold the traditions and, and share the culture with us. Although I don't recommend Thanksgiving for 55, it's a bit much. <laughs> And we also did a Christmas party, and I took part in International Day, uh, which was just a showcase of all the international students. And the European University of Vienna uh, really has a lot of international students. I would say 40% of the students um, are international students, which is very high. And U of M is about 30% international students. Um, and then we all drew flags, so it was again sharing the culture. Uh, and you, of course, can't see people dancing, but that is uh, a bunch of European and international students rocking out to some German techno. <laughs> so it's very lively and brings people together. <coughs> and my internship at the Dinner Marshall Fund in the United States. Uh, this is again a Buddhist tag in the Kupala uh, with the German interns that I worked with. And this is the US Embassy. And if you work in international relations, you get lucky. Sometimes, and you get a tour of the U.S. Embassy, which in Berlin is very cool. Um, it's one of the most secure embassies in the world, and you can actually go up to it and touch it. With no offense. And it's a little bit Berlin. Deloitte Tomatsu is the largest consulting and accounting firm in the world. And Deloitte is the brand in which independent firms collaborate to provide accounting, consulting, financial advisory and tax services to clients. The services offered by the Deloitte U.S. firms fall into four broad categories or functions, audit and enterprise risk services or AIRS, consulting, financial advisory services, and tax. And 
and Deloitte has a significant presence in all major industries. Um, we work in consumer business and transportation, energy resources, healthcare, public sector, manufacturing, life sciences. Um, in the United States, there are over 100 offices in over 90 cities, so we're in most major cities. So it has a global presence. We're in over 147 countries and continuing to expand. So if you would like to work in any of the countries in green, consider Deloitte. <laughs> And Deloitte Tax is the firm that I work with out of the U.S. firms. We, of course, focus on um, individual tax returns for uh, mobile employees, for multinational corporations. Um, and within Deloitte Tax, uh, there is Global Employer Services, um, which is the narrow field which I work with. And we have four companies that we work with, international science services, international human resources, compensation benefits, risk, talent, and rewards. Uh, international assignment services uh, has to do with tax equalization and income and social tax planning, um, global project management. Um, compensation benefits takes care of Compensation for executives, employment tax, retirement plans, um, health and welfare plans, risk, talent, and rewards. Um, takes care of global rewards and assists with the design and delivery and risk management of rewards and full compliance programs for a global workforce. Um, and it's all brought together with technology. Deloitte um, is a leader in technology. We have a program called Global Advantage. Uh, which we use to facilitate and bring together all the services that we offer. And international human resources um, is the field I work in. Um, our main focus is really global assignment management and calculation of any expatriate benefits, um, policy and process consulting. So we go in and design uh, global policy for companies. Uh, say you're a CEO or with me of human resources in a multinational corporation and you really want to come up with a well-designed, cost-effective uh, solution for sending people abroad. And so it would be able to help you design that, looking at your business strategy and corporate strategy, the company work culture, and build something that everybody is happy with. But I don't have a slide for what I do. Unfortunately, I'm in an office all day, so I can't really show pictures of that. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I work with expatriates uh, from all over the world, um, all mostly with, from the United States to Germany. And I'm very happy that I had a chance to work in Germany uh, through cultural vistas and through the CPYs program, as it has given me an opportunity to learn about the German culture and it can relate more to my clients. Um, I have phone calls with my clients or sometimes I get to meet them in person, uh, but it's really nice to be able to connect in a more personal way. Um, to them, it just seems like I am just one more bureaucrat that they have to go through, one more um, sheet to fill out, one more thing to proofread, one more time double checking if everything's correct. But I can pull on the experiences I had in Germany to kind of give what I do a human face. I often use Rattelstall and Bolden say, um, whenever I mention that I was there for language school, they just light up and I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. I lived in Konstanz for a while, or my uh, cousin has a house there. I visit there every summer. And, um, they're just happy to know and be able to relate to you. Um, and any major city that they mention, whether it's Stuttgart or Frankfurt or Hamburg or anything, um, I can sort of jump in and say, that's a great city, I really like the museum there, or um, just little things like that, and being able to relate to who you're working with um, gives you a human face and builds a little bit of trust, which is very important, especially if you're sharing, sharing sensitive information, um, family issues, anything that arises, um, I will be taking care of them. So it's nice to be able to connect and kind of build a relationship with someone that you're going to be working with for the next two or three years. Uh, and Deloitte is um, very excited.
excited to be on campus. Um, we do a lot of events. I might have a calendar if you're interested in more of that. Um, what we look for in interns and awesome new hires is people who are involved in different things, people who are very detail oriented. There's a lot um, to think about in a job like mine, lots of task lists, lots of multitasking. Um, people want to get paid, so if you mess that up, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, so attention to detail is crucial. Um, I have to be a little bit interested in business. Uh, even though I don't have a business degree, you're still around that, so you do need that interest and know a little bit about tax, even though you don't have to finish an accounting program to work in Deloitte Tax, which is a common misconception. Although if you want to be a tax consultant, unfortunately, you do need an accounting background. Um, and you really have to just be excited to work with others. Uh, you're never alone on a team. There's always other people working with you, and of course you're working with clients every day, so you really have to like working with people and just be ready to go out there and try new things and be creative. I'm Kathleen Schulke and I'm from Fraunhofer and uh, Fraunhofer does cool stuff. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about that today but uh, it's always a joy to talk about our company because it's exciting, it's fresh, um, there's interesting things all the time going on, it's, uh, it's never boring. So if we could move to the next slide, I don't know how you want oh, to yeah, indicate. Just, just, just should I just wave? Yeah, wave. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a little bit of our, our background. Um, we're the wholly owned subsidiary of Fraunhofer Cassell Chef. Um, Ms. Wunderwald Jensen mentioned earlier uh, that Fraunhofer is very well known in Germany, it's founded in Germany. Um, it's famous for MP3 technology. I, I'm sure all of you use it in your iPads and, and whatever else, or iPods, iPads, or I was stuff. But we're well known, and we're well known around the world. We were, from Up USA was incorporated in 1994 in Rhode Island. Um, we've actually been headquartered in Michigan for, uh, since that time in 1994, in spite of our being incorporated in Rhode Island. We're a nonprofit research and development organization. At the current moment, we have six research institutes, two offices and headquarters. And we have approximately 170 full-time staff, eight part-time employees, and 60 interns. The interns are native of domestic and international interns. These rotate. Sometimes we have more, sometimes we have less. Um, but we always have interns. This is just our organization profile. These six uh, centers that we have do different types of technologies our headquarters in the center, and the two offices. And I'll go into detail with each one of the, the centers. Our first center is our Center for Experimental Software Engineering. These guys have customers like NASA. They do very cool stuff, uh, things like rovers, satellite technologies. They deal with software issues for those uh, operations. Some of it is classified, so I can't tell you. And, uh, <laughs> but they do do, in general, things like verification, validation, modeling, technology evaluations, um, program project and risk management. You see the list. What CESC is normally looking for are computer science majors. Some employees and interns have IT or mathematic backgrounds. But in general, that would be the type of person they're looking for to help them accomplish their tasks. Our Center for Molecular Biotechnology is actually at the moment our largest center in the United States. They do work on vaccines, protein therapeutics, industrial enzymes, and AG biotech. This picture that you're seeing here is a pilot plant. You see they have all these uh, plants that they're growing, I believe in this case it may be tobacco. What they're working on here is uh, a vaccine, a plant-based vaccine that they use instead of egg serum. So this prevents allergies for people who have allergies to egg-based uh, immunizations and they can quickly produce uh, immunization serums. So one of the reasons why they're doing this, they received a lot of funding uh, from the U.S. government anti-terrorist uh, funds, so to speak in order to do quick vaccine production um, that was safe for everybody here in the United States. 
and that's one thing that they're focusing on at home, have those types of things. They also work on things like um, uh, sleeping sickness for cattle uh, in Africa. They do um, things worldwide, basically. These guys are generally looking for some really smart people. They have molecular biologists, biochemists, People who study microbiology, molecular virology, immunology, bioorganic chemistry, biology, and environmental plant sciences, and, and horticulturists, uh, you know, to look after the plants and, and discover what are the best uh, plants to use for the various types of vaccines that they're doing research on. Our Center for Manufacturing Innovation uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts, has sort of reinvented itself. It used to do things like, you know, assembly line production, how to speed it up, how to make it faster and better. Um, however, uh, you know, as the economy kind of went down, those types of, uh, that type of demand went down as well. And so they kind of moved into this life sciences, biosciences field, which is where they're focusing a lot of their energies now. Um, this picture, for example, is, called, is of a lab on a chip. It's basically a diagnostic tool that can come up with all kinds of information on somebody's health and it's all stored in just this little device. So they're working on biotechnology, photonics, manufacturing, and renewable energies. So they're looking for employees and interns that have backgrounds in mechanical engineering, manufacturing engineering, engineering physics, and more recently, they're looking into this biophysics and chemistry to support their life sciences efforts. Our Center for Coatings and Laser Applications actually has two different divisions which do two unrelated things. The one division is the coatings division out in East Lansing, Michigan. These guys are doing really cool stuff with diamond technologies. Um, they're working on polycrystalline and single crystalline diamond. Uh, what you see here is actually a diamond that was grown in their lab. Um, they're working on diamond electronics and making diamond windows for use in laser applications and other items. Um, they also do coatings, uh, friction uh, redu reducing uh, coatings for a variety of applications. Our laser division, they generally do high-tech cladding. Um, they're working on doing things, for example, laser hardening of drill bits so that they can like that for oil drilling. As you know, it's difficult and they have to dig deeper and deeper to get oil and through you know, difficult rock formations and, and by doing hardening, laser hardening, they can make these bits couple. So CCL is looking for physicists, chemists, materials scientists, and engineers. Um, anybody who's had any kind of previous Classwork or experience with vacuum and or laser systems is, is uh, you know, ideal. They drool over those. So if you have any of that sort of a thing, you certainly would have an advantage over someone who doesn't have that kind of a background. Our Center for Sustainable Energy Systems, this is a, a very new or relatively new uh, center by us. They're in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They're working on sustainable energies and energy efficiency. So they're looking at solar, wind, um, building technologies and materials. They're currently in the process of setting up a, a, um, a building that's in a sort of a run-down area that they're going to completely uh, renovate and put in all this new technology and use it as sort of like a, a living sample, if you will, of new technologies and um, a showcase. And uh, they're going to be high in demand in the future. As you know, this is kind of the, the, the buzzwords, the clean energies and so on and so forth. So they're going to be growing and looking they're also looking for interns. This center is a little bit different from the other centers is because they're also spreading out to an additional field that the others are not. The others are very math and science centered and they have very few, if any, potentials for interns who are in business or, or, or something along those lines. This center is different. This center actually uh, has a tech bridge mission in addition to its core scientific focus and that is that they, they want uh, business majors, MBAs, um, to try to help them uh, with clean energy startup companies that want to, uh, you know, work through Fraunhofer, sort of this incubation entity that will later help them move on to, to spin-offs out to their own uh, establishments. So if you do have a, a
a business major or MBA, if you have any kind of special specialty or any kind of class that you've taken with regard to entrepreneurship or um, you know anything of that nature, it's certainly something that you would consider. Our Center for Laser Technology, although we mentioned the other center that does uh, laser applications, this one more or less builds lasers. They do laser optics. Um, you see here the picture of, of a laser next to a cell phone, just to give you some idea of, of the size. Um, their business has, has grown substantially uh, in the last couple of years as the demand has increased. You know, For a while there, the United States was behind with regard to laser technologies compared to other countries like Germany, for example, and, and we're starting to catch up. Um, I think now that they've discovered um, how beneficial it is, you know, there was always a certain sort of a pushback from, from entities like labor unions with regard to laser technologies because they sort of felt they would be taking jobs away from, from people. But I think they've advanced to the point where they really need to look at that to be competitive. So CLT is looking for mechanical material optic engineers and engineers and scientists that have experience in laser technologies and circuitry. Now when I say the engineers, I don't mean to say you have to be a full-blown one. I'm saying if you're studying this technology, Brown is a great place to go to get hands-on experience. And it's not boring. It's not your average Joe stuff. It's always every day something different, some new technology. We're not producing anything. These are prototypes. I mean, we're trying to be ahead of the ball. We have these two offices, the Digital Media Office and the Heinrich Hertz Institute Office. These are just outpost offices. They are not really looking for anybody. I just brought them up because we had showed them earlier. <laughs> so don't even bother with those two. Now, all six of our research centers offer internships. And generally, there are three types of internships. And the first one is an intermittent internship. Now, for you folks who are studying here, that would probably only work for, for the Michigan centers that you can get back and forth to. And that would be part-time internship, you know, 20 hours per week, working around your studies, could be full-time in the summer. The second is a summer internship, depending on the school's break here, I think it's four, four months, right? So it'd be three or four months. And the other is a regular internship, which sort of mirrors our our international interns. Um, generally, they come for a six-month internship. Uh, some of them stay for 12 months. Uh, it can be done either during the study period or within one year of graduation at the end of the, the period. And, and the reason why we do it like that is because we're sort of trying to comply with the J-1 visa requirements and keep it uniform amongst all our interns, whether they're domestic or international. You need to have work authorization. Um, Non-U.S. citizens, permanent residents. Well, as you know, even U.S. citizens need to have work authorization nowadays. We do participate in the E-Verify program. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a new initiative by the U.S. government where everybody has to run through a governmental system to check and prove that they've got work authorization. Now, interns that are uh, international interns would normally have some sort of a CPT, which is curricular practical training, or OPT, which is an optional practical training authorized by the International Student Office in USCIS, or they would have gotten something like a J-1 visa through our own program, for example, or an outside organization that has J-1 visa authorization capabilities. Um, there are a variety of ways to get work authorization if you're a, a third part, a third country national. Um, we can work with you. How do you apply? You can apply for internships and regular employment by sending a cover letter and resume to the center that you're interested in. We don't do central hiring. Each individual center does their own hiring. You can go to our website. If there's a link for our specific centers, and there's a contact. You can send it there. Um, we also have a career opportunities link on our main website. The internships are not necessarily always listed there. The, the, the generally open career should be listed there. That doesn't mean uh, that somebody's not slow uh, to the gate and you can't go ahead and send out a resume. They may not even, you may get there before they even know they need somebody. So I would suggest if you have an interest, go ahead and apply. Um, okay, so I wanted to take just a quick minute, I don't know how long I've been running here, probably too long, um, about our parent organization. Uh, Fraunhofer Gesellschaft uh, is located in Germany. They have more than 80 research units. 
uh, including 60 straight Fraunhofer institutes. They're all over Germany. They're actually located in some other countries as well, but I won't even bother with that right now because they're small isolates and they're not worth trying to get an internship there because I think they're more representative offices, if you will. Um, they have more than 18,000 staff, and if you go to their website, and I've got a little business card back there where you can take it with you and get this um, HTTP address here for the Fraunhofer jobs. They'll list internships and careers there. And we have had a couple of exchange students from U of N. We are going to actually sell them. Oh, good. That's good. We've gone to one of our, our parent institutes. Um, both Fraunhofer Gesellschaft and Fraunhofer USA, because we're nonprofit research and development organizations, are, are very committed. Uh, to developing young scientists and engineers, and um, we'll do it if we can help you. I just wanted to mention very quickly, uh, one of our, all of our parent institutes partner with the university, at least one and sometimes more than one. <coughs> our WTH often is a university uh, that partners with, I think, several from other institutes. They have a program um, that's funded by RWTH Aachen, and they will also help facilitate U.S. students who want to come to RWTH Aachen uh, during the summer months for 10 weeks. I've written their e e email address down there, or sorry, their website address down there as well. If you want some information on them, um, you know, they may be able to support you or fund you uh, to do some sort of an internship through that university. Okay, so I just wanted to say best of luck to you in your unfolding careers. And I, I, I did want to say that my daughter uh, graduated from U of M in the spring with honors, and uh, she has found a job uh, in Austin, Texas, and in her field, um, she's a, a, a graphic, uh, sorry, an animator illustrator for a company called G Tech in, in Texas, and um, she's really enjoying it. And uh, I just want to say. There's hope, you will find something, you have to be persistent. Um, you know, do what you can to develop yourself, uh, spend the time and effort to do the work. You know, she had to put out 150 resumes before she got one interview. But she made that interview count, let me tell you, and I suggest you do the same. All right, well good luck to you. Good afternoon, my name is Sophie Stefki. Um, I have been, I just give you a little update about myself and then uh, some information about the company that I work for and then how you can uh, apply to us, what kind of uh, programs we offer. So um, I would not be here if we would have had this day yesterday. So I come from the eastern part of Germany and I uh, came to the United States five years ago. And at a certain point I've met Peggy as a German in an hour you meet all the Germans, so I hope you know someone who's in here. And uh, she invited me to this career day, American, German American career day, five years, yeah, I think five years ago. <coughs> I met CF at this uh, career day and they invited me for an interview. I started with an internship, it took me a year to get really my foot into the door and get a full-time position. So I did my internship in benefits and compensation. And then I, did an in, then I worked as, uh, in international assignments. So I took care of people that came to the United States or wanted to go abroad and uh, work there. And since January, I'm in training. So there are some ways in which you have to do your career and go where you would like to go. And uh, during my presentation, I will also tell you again, it would be great doing internships so you get uh, hands-on experiences because companies are looking for that kind of stuff, especially the is looking for that. So, ZF was founded in 1915 by uh, Mr. Zeppelin. He's actually the founder or the inventor of the blimp. So, if you look at this here on the back, there's a little blimp. I don't have it here. So, it's this little airship. And uh, he, he invented a serious hafen at the Bodensee in Lake Konstanz. And um, on a certain point, he ran out of money. And so he, um, before he filed bankruptcy, the city of Friedrichshafen bought this company and they made a foundation out of it. So ZF is not a public company, we are actually a foundation, which is kind of interesting. We, uh, the city of Friedrichshafen owns 93.8% of this company. So it's just a different company set up. So in uh, 1981, we founded our, we uh, opened our first plant in the United States in Maine, uh, in Brewer, and we have been here in the United States for the last 30 days, uh, 30 years. <laughs> um, in Germany, actually, we are in the top 10 
uh, for um, employers that young professionals would like to go to. So we are in a, in a, a range of Audi and uh, Volkswagen and these kind of companies. So we're pretty huge over there in, in Germany. So what do we do? We are an automotive supplier. We are basically the Mercedes under the automotive suppliers. You can find us in buses, trains, uh, helicopters, boats, cars, everything that is driving. You even can find us in the American school bus, for example, or in the little golf cars that are going on the golf course. So we are basically everywhere. <laughs> and we both have our chassis, suspensions, transmissions, clutches, steering systems. We uh, bought two years ago Sherry. Sherry is known for keyboards. So we went also into the electronic parts. And uh, so now we have also um, Harley Davidson as a customer, which is great for us as an employee. We can get a discount for that. <laughs> and, um, and we are investing into uh, new technology. So we are just uh, building a plant in South Carolina for wind power. So we will build gearboxes for um, the wind, I don't know how you call it, wind things. <laughs> and, um, which are huge, so the plant is, uh, will be a huge plant, and yeah, so that's what we do right now. And uh, we are in over 120 locations in the world. So as you can see, we are mainly in Europe, but also here in the United States, in Mexico, South America, we are in Asia, <coughs> Australia, and Africa, so you can find us all over the place. So if you are interested in working in an international company, or if you are interested in working in different places in the world, that's the company to go for. So we have about 60,000, 64,000 employees worldwide. And here in the United States, we have uh, 5,060. Or well, let's say in North America, we have 5,060. In the United States, we have about 3,500. And we are growing right now. So we are actually really looking for people. And uh, so you can, you can find our company uh, in 16 locations here in the US. and. Um, we have a headquarter that is just 15, 20 minutes from here in Northville, and two more plants uh, in Michigan. Then we are in Wisconsin and Illinois. We, you can find us at the, uh, in Florida for our marine division. It's probably the most attractive one. And then we are also in Georgia and South Carolina. So even if you are not interested in traveling through the world, you just can travel in the United States if you want. OK. So since we are an engineering company, and I thought I probably had a lot of engineers in here, I just wanted to show you that we do a lot of research and development. Um, so we have approximately 632 patents out there, and uh, we spend a lot of money for research and development. We have eight centers. Uh, five of them are in Germany for research and development, and three are in the world, so in China, in the Czech Republic, and here in the United States in Northville, so just around the corner. Northwell has about 400 employees right now. Um, yeah, and we have about 5,400 people that work in research and development. So these are the locations for our research and development centers. So actually, for Germany, so this happens in the south of Germany. So you would, if you learn German right now, that's probably the weirdest uh, accent you can get. So it will be hard to talk there. The leading in the, in the north of Germany, that's we call them fish heads. It's really <laughs> so it's in the north, so close to the Baltic Sea. Then in the middle of the country in Schweinfurt, uh, Germany. And then Passau is close to the Austrian border. It's also a beautiful uh, place to go. And then Schwäbisch Gmünd is in the middle of the Schwäbisch Alb. So uh, it's also funny, I think they talk there. And then Pilsen, if you like beer, just that's the place to go for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then North Pole, we know that one. And Shanghai might be also really interesting, since it's a very fast going uh, city. Um, yeah. Okay, so before, so before I talk to you about our international training program, I just wanted to let you know that we are very interested in students and uh, core students, interns and graduate students. Our company has hired in the past more people with 5 to 10 years of experience, but we are moving into uh, the direction of hiring graduate students so we can develop them in our fields where we need them. So it's always a good idea to do an internship at the end. So for example, myself, I did an internship there. We have a couple of students from the U of M that did internships with us, and they got hired afterwards into the company. So I can highly recommend, if you have some times between your studies, even if it's 10 days a week or something like that, 10 hours a week, 
then just um, try to apply with us. We really look into engineering, so software engineering, um, design engineering, mechanical, electrical engineering, so this kind of engineering field. Um, in sales purchasing, I mean, we have only a few positions here, but uh, it's, I mean, we have really great um, places to, to learn stuff and get hands-on experiences, and that is what we are looking when we see your resumes. Um, so I can highly recommend to you to go for an internship with us. Um, so we have, but what I am here and talking to you today, we have a very interesting program. It's uh, our international training program. So every year in October, we uh, start a 15 months long program um, for people from all around the world. I mean, we have 18 participants in this program. Nine of them are from Germany, the rest is from uh, all over the place. And um, in order to apply for that, you need to go through an assessment center. So there will be a one-day assessment center where there's a team of people having, doing different exercises and then they will decide if, you, if they would like to hire you for, for this program. What is really interesting, uh, the program is in, German, in Germany, so you have to be fluent in German. I mean, you don't have to be perfect. But it helps us because you become perfect during the 15 months, but um, you should know some German for that. Um, you would do four different uh, projects. So basically, three of them would be in Germany in different locations, and one would be somewhere in the world. So wherever you would like to go with the CS company. Um, you would do these different projects in your field of study and also in different field of studies. So let's say you are an engineer and you would do one in engineering, one in sales, one in purchasing maybe, and one in testing, and then you do another one abroad somewhere. So it's a really great program, I can highly recommend it. We just sent one of the U of M students, former U of M students to Germany. He started last week with this program for the next, next 15 months. So right now for the US, uh, we have two people over there in this program, and we will try um, you know, to get your resumes at the, like in the next two months, and then I try to hire or uh, do the assessment center in January. So if you are available next year in October for an in interested on a training, the training program, then just send your resume and um, we would like to consider you for that one. So after the after the panel, just stop by at my at my little table and ask questions and give me your name, so I can contact you for that. Um, let me just see what. Uh, Okay, so what the app does, we um, send our job postings out here to the German department and then we have contacts with the engineering department, so we also send uh, job postings out uh, from them and then we use the career tool, the European career tool where you can also apply and also go to our website. I mean, for internships, our internships are not really posted on the zf.com website, but when you go to the German one, and you would like to do some um, internships in Germany, then go to the germanzf.com page and look for internships there. They hire people from abroad. Um, if you have business uh, in, in your major, you need to be really fluent for an internship over there. Because you would work in marketing probably, you need to write text and they need you to be really fluent in German. If you are in engineering, then uh, it could be just fine with German conversational style, that would be fine. And uh, they have about 400 interns right now in Germany in different locations, so it's huge over there. Where we here in Norsburg, for example, we have about 10 interns right now with about 400 employees at the location. Um, yeah, and then just for just some uh, you know, background, but we had uh, we have three students from UFM right now. So one is in Germany, Steve Firsby. I don't know, I don't know if you know him. He did aviation, and so he's now in Germany. Uh, he started as an intern last year with us, then got hired in January, and now he's part of the training program. <coughs> then we have Maureen Myers. She was supposed to come with me today to talk a little bit about that, but unfortunately, there was a very important project, so she had to finish that. Uh, she started with us in May, I guess, and she's now in the steering system department. This department is looking right now desperately for people, so if you are facing graduation, you might want uh, to apply with them. Mm -hmm. And then we have Derek Hauserhut. He contacted me last year at the German American Student Bank here at UFM, and uh, he kind of contacted me all the time and tried to get an internship over there. And so he is uh, right now in the HR department in Germany in Philadelphia and is doing an internship there. 
So it's go to these kind of events, meet uh, companies, go to their websites. It's really a great opportunity to find internships uh, if you are interested in international companies. For the app, um, it's really, if you speak German, it's, uh, it's I mean, that's just a, a really good add-on. So it's desired for on, on our side if you speak German because we have about 50 people that are from Germany at the site in Norso, for example. And so if you speak German, that's just in your favor. Uh, even that we are an international company, we are very German <laughs> and very Swabian. So sometimes we, do, we just see uh, forms are not translated into English yet. So it's always good when you have some German skills. Hi there, I'm Bob Dolan from IAB, IAB Automotive Engineering. We're a, uh, a German-based uh, engineering consulting design development firm, although we do have uh, a U.S. office here in Northville. So I'm having a bit of a small world moment tonight. I'm not from HR, and I come here and I find three companies that are all uh, associated with the Budensee. I, I lived six years in the town that these ladies have been talking about in pretty soft. And, and ironically, ZF is right next door to IEB in Northville. So it's kind of bizarre. So, yeah, I have to apologize. Our, uh, it's, a, it's a big week for engineering services providers. The DEER conference is going on down in Detroit. So a lot of our executive staff and uh, our HR staff are, are uh, occupied. So I actually manage the uh, engine design team for IEB. And Rebecca Umke, who's with us tonight, also from IAB. Rebecca designs, develops, tests, and validates OBD systems, onboard diagnostic systems, for all sorts of different products. So, uh, go ahead, thanks. Um, IAB strengths, well, we do systems engineering. So, just so I, I get a feel, I'll show of hands, who's in a technical field here, who's studying mechanical engineering, electronics, controls, and aviation, okay. Okay, so, IAB is, is in the engineering services providing business, right? So we do engine design, transmission design, we do development. We do anything from a couple days worth of work, consult, evaluate, make recommendations, all the way through turnkey programs, be they engines, transmissions. We actually are the only engineering services provider who can develop a whole vehicle. We have we do sheet metal work, the new Volkswagen Passat that's hitting the streets that's built here in the U.S. IAB did all the body and white uh, sheet metal work for that car. And we have our own crash test facility. Most people who are in the contract services providing to do development work cannot develop a vehicle. And IAB is enormous in Europe, small in the U.S. at the moment. So that is the challenge that's been thrown down to our president. He's already doubled the sales of the company in the one year that he's been there, from 10 to 20 million. And guess what, his target for next year is 30 million. And we do that with people. We've got about 120 people in the office that Rebecca and I work in. And uh, in the next three years, they'll, they'll easily double. But uh, let me go on through these slides if you're not already punch drunk on PowerPoint slides. And uh, I, I may skip through some of them because it's it's basically an overview of our technical capabilities, so I get a little bit dry. But here you can get a feel for globally where we have locations. Um, in a minute we'll get to uh, a little bit more about what each, each location does, but uh, the weight of the whole company is in Germany, uh, the headquarters in Berlin, um, the technical, a lot of the technical people for powertrain design that I work with, for example, are in Chemnitz. But uh, we also have an office in Friedrichshafen. So uh, we're spread out all over the world. So the Detroit office is actually the Northwell office with about 120 people. And um, our job is to grow and expand and, and service uh, the OEM and the tier one suppliers in the North American market. So here's a little bit about IAB shareholders. We're 50% owned by Volkswagen. Continental, I don't know if you know them, they're a German tire manufacturer, and you can see a couple others. Now, Volkswagen's uh, arrangement with us is uh, they have insight into our profit and loss. They don't see what projects we run. They also happen to be a big customer of ours. But uh, IEB was born, IEB, by the way, stands for Ingenieur Gesellschaft Auto und Verkehr. 
So it's an association of engineers working on cars and automotive systems and traffic systems. So uh, um, it started as a partnership between Volkswagen and some, uh, some technical universities in the area to do research and calculation work. And it actually spun out into its own company. And Volkswagen just happens to be the largest single air uh, shareholder. So, um, as I mentioned, we got about uh, 4,300 people in the company, heavily centered in, in Germany. Uh, within Europe, IEV owns about 65% of the engineering services uh, business. So some of our competitors, I don't know if you can hear the names, ABL, IDB, or Ricardo. Um, IEV is considerably larger than they are, uh, although we are much smaller here in North America. So again, that's, that's my uh, boss's job, is to, is to change that and get more of a North American piece. And that's why, shamefully, I'm here to recruit <laughs> people into my group. So, okay. Uh, these are some of our customers. Of course, these are all nameplates uh, you recognize. There's uh, frontline OEMs there. There's tier one suppliers there. And not all suppliers or customers of ours want, want it known that, uh, that they buy some of their engineering services. Okay. So we're, we're divided up into a lot of different uh, systems or business units. One of the main ones is diesel systems. That happens to be the, the business unit that Rebecca works in. And uh, of course, uh, after treatment, exhaust after treatment is big for diesel engines. So we do an awful lot of controls. OBD is what Rebecca works on. Uh, different fuel systems, onboard diagnostics, uh, performance and emissions. We have all sorts of calculation and simulation capabilities. We have uh, test stands, but I'll come on to that in a second. Go ahead. Um, so we uh, we use DOE, Design of Experiments, for a lot of our work. We've got some automated processes that use DOE in order to calibrate. It used to be as simple as, and I'll keep this quick for the non-engineering types, but uh, it used to be really simple. You played with air, you played with fuel, you played with timing, you had a couple of knobs to turn. And now with after treatment and all of the other things that go on, it's far too complicated. And so we've brought DOE methodology into our, our calibration process. Okay? Uh, gasoline and alternate fuels are lumped together in another business unit. And we do engine testing uh, there. We do all sorts of calibration. We do benchmarking. A customer might come to us and say, we need an engine in the three liter range. What are all the leading engines? So we'll go buy four, five, six, turn them down, measure them, evaluate them, run them on test stands. Now we know for a fact what the benchmark is, and that helps us to design and develop a, a better product than that. So, okay. so uh, gaseous fuels, um, we, we've been involved in quite a bit of vehicle work for gaseous and alternate fuels. You can see all the different systems that are on board that require design, development, validation. <coughs> Uh, powertrain design and development, that's the, uh, that's the business unit that I am in. I manage the engine design portion of that. We also do transmission design. Uh, last week we completed an eight month program to design a, an automatic transmission for a motorcycle. You think, well that sounds crazy, but with uh, emissions and fuel economy standards soon to come to two wheel vehicles, you have to be able to control uh, how the powertrain is used in order to meet the fuel consumption. Okay. So, what do we do with powertrain design and development? Well, we can do anything. We, we do individual components. We do failure analysis. So, in, in the first column, it can be as simple as uh, recently completed a, a crankshaft design for a customer. He wanted to do the rest of the engine, but he wanted to he wanted someone else to design his crankshaft in order to see if he came up with a similar answer. Or we do subsystems. You do a loosening system. You do a rotating reciprocating system. You do a valve train. You do a portion of an engine from transmission. Or in the third column, you do a whole turnkey engine program for somebody. From, from concept or benchmarking or determining you know, what do they want, helping them write their own requirements, all the way through uh, analysis and design iteration, prototype, build, assemble. Test, validate, calibrate, emission certified, production launch it, support it. This is uh, 
this has been my life for 20 years with engine, DC development, and uh, <coughs> I like it a lot, it's a lot of fun. Then there can be complete turnkey where you can take that third column a step further where you handle all of the integration into the vehicle, the final calibration, and the final certifications. So that's fun stuff. These are some uh, <coughs> projects we, we did uh, in conjunction with our, our European office. And these are production vehicles that you can go buy that IAB designed the engine and transmission for. Sometimes we purchase and apply ZF transmissions. <laughs> Depends what the customer wants. So this is an example of doing powertrain integration. Uh, a lot of times, uh, maybe an OEM has an existing platform, they have an existing engine, but the two haven't met one another. And there's a lot of issues to, to iron out there, the mounting systems, all the supporting systems. Calibration of the transmission, uh, engineering of the drive line, we do that work too. Okay. So vehicle systems is something that's much bigger in Europe than it is in the US, but we're growing that department. It's small now, it's about to get a lot bigger, where we do active safety systems, infotainment, telematics, all of the really fun stuff that sells cars nowadays, the infotainment, the chassis systems, functional safety, navigation. A lot, a lot of systems engineering going in, miles and miles of wiring. Um, these are all the, uh, the, the symbols you'll recognize in your dash if something's going on, but we, uh, we develop these systems, uh, calibrate them, and uh, you know, do all the validation testing for the various uh, vehicle systems, you know, stability control, NLI brakes, traction control, all these sorts of things. Energy management is another business unit. So these guys handle all the hybrid, all of the uh, electrical storage devices, all of the, uh, let's say, uh, <coughs> vehicles that have multiple modes, maybe an internal combustion engine, gas, diesel, alternate fuel, along with a battery system. And, and it gets to be a complicated powertrain system when you have to marry several different sources and have uh, a lot of different drives and modes of the system. So here you've got a, this is where, I, I'm in the cast iron and steel world, but this is where it collides with controls and wires and computers. So uh, this is very much uh, optimizing uh, engine and what, what, the, uh, what the true hybrid systems can do for us. Okay. So energy management, just storage, power electronics, wiring and power distribution and cooling. We never thought of the, the cooling of a hybrid battery system is easily as complicated as that of, of an engine or a transmission in order to keep the, the batteries from going into a, a thermal spiral. This is uh, IAB's North American headquarters in Northville. So there we've got uh, a nice new building that was built in 2008. Prior to that, we were located here in Ann Arbor. So we've got uh, four test cells there, some of which have hybrid capability, some of which are heavy duty. We use four other test cells uh, off-site as well. Ours are very high-end test cells for doing performance and emissions work with complete combustion air control. It's like having air conditioning on your house, feed the engine. So you can control temperature, humidity, and, and everything to do emissions work. And then we, we rent some other test stands as well. We can diesel, gasoline, alternate fuels, all the way through. We're adding gas to so. Yeah. so I was uh, in a similar position as, as where you guys are many, many years ago when I was uh, finishing school. Up. Unfortunately, I did not do an internship, but I, I joined a company here in the Detroit area um, who was doing a lot of work with a German firm to develop new engines. I thought, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. That'll, that'll never come around to me, you know. Sure enough, I was asked to, to go to Germany for a year, and uh, I must have liked it because I stayed six. <laughs> and uh, it was really neat to, I had learned German in Germany. I took a course for six weeks before I went, but I can't say I learned German there. So I, I learned German in German pretty often. So I guess my, uh, my German is Schwabish. But um, yeah, IAV is, is growing. We definitely want to add um, some interns, and we would ideally like to cultivate those interns into directs. There's plenty of opportunity for international travel. 
being that we're so uh, German-centric in our company, every project I work on has some level of collaboration with Germany. So the German language skills, uh, I'd say at least a third of the phone conversations when you walk through the building are in, are in German. And somebody who can walk in with German skills, language skills on day one has a, has a distinct advantage. But um, yeah, in the, uh, the internship opportunities, I would say between a third and half the time, we do end up swinging in through Germany as well. So not all of them are located here, even though you have the, the cultural experience right here in Northville. We do have some of our German in, our interns travel to Germany. Um, it is a very exciting company to work for. Our, our president and CEO has a contagious amount of enthusiasm. And um, he expects us to recruit and hire our own staff. Obviously, HR is involved with that. But the front